we're back on the Hemi and uh, hopefully doing the last finishing steps to get it ready to go back in that. So Carl took the Liberty and got all of our spark plugs inserted. He used a 10 millimeter socket and ratchet to get the ignition coils tightened into place. Used a 10 millimeter socket to tighten in the MDS plugs. Time to get the exhaust manifolds back on and we'll be one step closer. Cross all the ones who heard my cries and watched me weep. I love everything. Fire spreading all around my room. My world's so bright, it's hard to breathe, but that's alright. Hush. We got the Hemi engine inside the charger and things were just not lining up. There was a too big of a gap between the transmission and the engine. The engine was trying to sit too far back on the engine mounts. The exhaust manifold wouldn't marry up to the exhaust piping. After looking at a couple of images and diagrams, we realized that we had the engine mount brackets on the wrong side. There's one that has a ring on it. Put that one on the passenger side. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the engine and change that. So while I've got the engine up and out, I'm gonna go ahead and replace the engine mounts because it shouldn't do this. This is actually a really good angle to see what we're up against here. The engine mount up here. It's connected by two bolts inside us around studs here and here if you've got the OEM stuff. We're gonna take that off, show you the new stuff and how it differs. Turns out the uh, motor bracket, jeez. Turns out the motor mount itself, there's not anything wrong, but the bolts that hold it to frame mount, that's really loose. This has not been tightened yet. And you can see that that's just free floating there. That bolt probably is gonna fall off and just get trapped in this cavity. Oh, jeez. Really? Jeez. Um, and if you're taking these out with the engine still in the bay, I highly recommend finding yourself the proper tool to be able to get this Torx setting out. This entire stud can be pulled out that way so that this can be slid out as just a small unit rather than having to feed these all the way through the frame. Oh, have the engine... Mm, Mostly out, pulled it up, be able to get to the engine mounting brackets. Engine mounting brackets are not symmetric. There's a ring on the one of them. The one with this ring here goes onto the passenger side of the vehicle. Let's see if we can save the next fellow some labor. Back to the mounting brackets, <laughs> engine mount brackets. Uh, they go onto the block. Again, this one's your passenger side. This one is your driver's side. And this matters, you'll notice this because the holes that line up with what goes to the engine mount offset the holes for the mount to the engine block differently. When you have them on the wrong side, you'll notice that nothing seems to line up. There's too big a gap between your transmission and your engine, too big a gap between your exhaust uh, pipes cat back and the exhaust manifold from the engine it's just too big a gap if you get them onto the right on the correct side so that the passengers on passenger drivers on driver that'll close that gap up point one step further this is a new uh, motor mount for the uh, passenger side of the vehicle you'll notice that you want to have these holes facing outward so that you can get the heat shields on there correctly that's so that you get these uh, oriented correctly on the passenger excuse me on the driver's side of the vehicle it's going to be mounted like that, although the plate will be reversed and that setup is down there. When you're looking at it from the outside on the passenger side, that pushes the two holes for the bracket, one and two, forward. Exactly the reverse for the other side of the vehicle. And that will make it so that your junction points line up such that the engine is far enough back to mate everything up. Last time you saw the V8, I think we uh, just finished assembling it. It is in the car. We've got this thing, made it up to the transmission, 
Carl's gone ahead and got the uh, alternator hooked up. The AC compressor's hooked up. We still need to put the starter in and tighten uh, some oil pan bolts and the exhaust bolts. But uh, hopefully, we're gonna get this thing started today, eh, Carl? Oh, yeah. All right, guys, Carl has all the torque converter bolts in. He just sat on the socket. <laughs> Did we torque those to 31 foot pounds? Which one? Torque converter bolts. Torque converter bolts go to. Uh, Yes, put on Okay, we torqued the uh, torque converter bolts to 31 foot pounds. We got the starter in. Uh, Carl's tightened all the bell housing bolts, the exhaust nuts, got the heat shields on, attached the knock sensor on the passenger side, and uh, I'm starting to work on getting the front end back together. So. This bracket right here bolts on the bottom, and that's what the radiator sits in. This headlight uh, grill bar will bolt in two bolts on each side, and then one on the lower side right there. So six bolts holding that. We'll have to reattach the hood release cable. Um, figure out where a handful of wiring goes and stuff. But uh, it's coming along. All right, guys, several hours have passed. We uh, have put all of the car back in the car. So now we're gonna go for a first start. We've filled it with water, uh, filled it with oil, put the oil filter on, got all the sensors in the right place, which was not as easy as one would hope. Um, Connected the upper and lower radiator hoses, got the cooler in there, the fans are back in there. Um, all the fuel injectors are back in place, everything's plugged in for the coil packs, for the fuel injectors. So, in your fuse box here, this one is your oil fuel pump relay. Um, pull that, do a couple cranks to get the oil pump uh, primed. But uh, all things considered, I think we're ready for a first start. All right, go ahead there, Carl. What's your RPMs at? 1,000. Huh? 1,000. Okay. It's cal calming down now. Just about 750. There's a learning curve. Yeah, I'm